Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to give a quick demonstration of the box sizing CSS property. Okay, so I have a blank page set up, and I'm using a looks like I'm using Sublime Text today. So what I'm going to do in the body of my page is I'm going to create a couple of divs. Uh, one div is simply going to be a regular box. And the other one, I'm going to give a class to it, and I'll put a border box on it. And OK, so I want to use the box sizing CSS property with the border box value. So that we can see what this is going to do, let's do a little bit of common formatting with our boxes. And basically, both of my divs are going to have a width of 500 pixels and a height of 200 pixels. They're both going to have margin of 50 pixels top and bottom, auto margin left and right, and they're going to have a nice thick border, 25 pixels, solid and red. Yeah, I think that's good for now. Let's save that, head on over to the browser, and refresh, and we'll see that we simply have two identical boxes set up. Now, I'm going to do something different for this second box. That's my div with border box as its class. I'm going to use the box sizing property. There it is. And I can do content box or I can do border box. Border box is going to be more interesting because when I do border box, control S to save, head over to the browser and refresh, we can see that the second box seems smaller than the first, even though in theory they should both be 500 pixels wide. This difference can be exaggerated if I give both of my boxes some padding, and I'll do a padding of 25 pixels. So what are the difference between these two boxes? Well, if I turn on an inspector on my browser, I can hover over this first box, and using the little screen tip over to the left, I can see that this box is actually 600 pixels wide by 300, even though I told the browser I wanted it to be 500 wide and 200 tall. My second box with box sizing applied is 500 wide and 200 tall, as it should be. But the first box is bigger than it should be. So basically, a regular box that, has not, that is not using the box sizing property, or a box that's using the content box value of the box sizing property, it will have its content set to the original setting of, let's say, 500 pixels. But we have 25 pixels of padding on the left, 25 on the right. That's an extra 50 right there. We have 25 pixels of border on the left, 25 on the right. That's another 50 there. So this box is now 600 pixels wide. It's wider than I originally designed. So the box sizing border box declaration, property value combination, is limiting me to 500 pixels, and it's going to ensure that that box is only 500 pixels wide. And of course, the interior is being reduced so that the outside of the box never exceeds my original specifications, 500 by 200. So I like this one a lot, and it helps you control a lot of what's going on on your page, whether you're using borders or not. So because it's so useful, I would incorporate this right into my reset rule. Box sizing, border box. Whether you're using a very simple reset rule or a more complicated reset rule, I think that's a nice one to apply. Because once we do that, then we no longer need to specify it for a particular element. And then all elements are going to be exactly the size that you specified that they be.